Mattel's new baby secret. She whispers just to you. How can you take control of your life and live the way you've always wanted? The answer lies in essential oils. Okay, here it is, finally, the story of my involvement with the multi-level marketing company, Young Living Essential Oils. I've mentioned Young Living so many times on my channel. I mean, I have this display for a reason, but I've never told the whole story of my past involvement or how I came to realize that it's a cult. It's about time I tell that story and discuss why Young Living isn't just a business. I think it was 2013, my sophomore year of college, that I first started hearing about essential oils. Some family members of mine got involved with Young Living and started telling family friends about what the oils could do. I lived on campus away from home, so I only occasionally heard about oils for a while. Honestly, I didn't pay much attention to the situation, and I knew nothing about oils or Young Living for a while after my family got involved. Eventually, some family members began expressing to me how excited they were about starting a business selling the oils. Apparently, they heard a lot of people made really good money selling them. They also started telling me about what the oils could do, simple things like alleviating headaches, allergies, joint pain, and nausea. Everything sounded great to me at the time. I was excited for them and believed that the oils could do all those things because I trusted my family's judgment. Then they told me that I could make money selling the oils too. I was in college and didn't want that as a job at the time, especially because the oils were too expensive for college students to buy off me. My family was cool with that though and made a deal with me that I was totally on board with for a while. They would build their young living business and while I was still in college, I would learn about the oils and prepare myself to become a distributor. Upon graduating, I would go into the family business, at least part-time, but preferably full-time, since I'd likely be making amazing money right out of the gate, given my family's mentorship. The first step in this process was to begin attending classes about essential oils, which my family began teaching. For a few classes, everything seemed great. I was taught how the oils alleviated minor ailments, new attendees always bought the oils at classes, and I was totally on board with it all. After a while, though, I began hearing more impressive claims about Young Living and essential oils in general. Gary Young, the founder of Young Living, said that he healed from crippling paralysis using only essential oils. The government was said to be covering up cures for major diseases so they could make money, and that's why essential oils were only classified as supplements rather than medicine. Also, explanations of what the oils could do began involving terms like frequency and detox, which I could never get anyone to actually define for me. I just got weirded out upon hearing all that. A few months and multiple classes had gone by, and I hadn't looked into any of the information I was taught myself. I had just trusted my family. So I decided to check things out on my own. By this time, my college classes had taught me how to actually recognize, read, and write scientific research articles, and I checked out any sources which Young Living or its distributors cited to back up their claims. None of it was even close to scholarly. I then hunted for evidence within reputable literature for the oil's efficacy, and still nothing. The things I was taught in classes about oils simply had no proof behind them. I just sat on this realization for a while, not telling my family about it. It was all pretty disappointing. Soon though, I looked into the history of the company and what I found left me shocked and actually worried about my family. The founder of Young Living, Gary Young, famously claims to have been paralyzed by a logging accident in his 20s. Apparently his doctor told him he'd never walk again. Then Young says he discovered essential oils and they healed him entirely. The medical records of his accident though are nowhere to be found. After his incident, Young started the Golden Six Health Club in Washington State. In 1982, although lacking any training, Young attempted to deliver his wife's baby in a whirlpool at the club. This is where things start to go bad. During the delivery, he held his baby underwater for nearly an hour, killing her. The case was ruled an accident, but the coroner involved said that the baby likely would have lived if it were delivered conventionally. Then, in 1983, a federal agent went undercover to investigate Young's services. When Young offered the agent prenatal care and treatment for her mother's cancer, all while falsely claiming to have graduated from the American Institute of Physioregenerology, he was arrested for practicing medicine without a license. After pleading guilty and serving a year of probation, he started a cancer clinic in Mexico where he treated patients with Laetrile. That's illegal in the US because it's known to produce cyanide in the body and injure or kill people, and it doesn't even cure cancer. 
Later, he started a clinic in California claiming to be a physician. That led to his arrest in 1988 for, and I hope you're ready for this, deceptive advertising, selling unapproved medical devices and unapproved drugs, manufacturing medical devices and drugs without a license, advertising drugs and devices to cure cancer, and practicing medicine without a license. After serving even further for his crimes, Gary Young finally founded Young Living Essential Oils, where he touted his expertise as a doctor of naturopathy with a master's in nutrition. The problem was, even Young admitted to having gotten these degrees from Bernadine University, a known mail-order diploma mill with no authorization to grant degrees. His only real degree comes from his high school in Idaho. Young Living knowingly utilizes a business model which has been proven to be riskier for employees than gambling, as I've said before on my channel. According to a study made by Dr. John M. Taylor, which was made publicly available by the FTC, 99.6% of MLM recruits lose money. That's actually worse than classic no-product pyramid schemes and even less lucrative than literally playing roulette in Vegas. And yet, Young Living continues to utilize this incredibly manipulative and unethical structure. The company is also known for getting in legal trouble for directly claiming or having its distributors claim that its oils treat or cure disease. Young Living earned an FDA warning letter in 2014, for instance, for claiming that its products could treat viral infections, including Ebola, Parkinson's disease, autism, diabetes, hypertension, cancer, insomnia, heart disease, post-traumatic stress disorder, dementia, and multiple sclerosis. They're not allowed to make any of those claims because there's no scientific proof that their oils can cure any disease at all. After discovering all of this, I never wanted anything to do with the company again. I've confronted distributors with this information, including some of my family members, but they've just dismissed it all reflexively. Many distributors' responses to criticism of the company is actually vitriolic and reeks of brainwashed indoctrination. It always seemed cultish to me. Until recently, though, I never actually considered Young Living a cult, but now, I definitely do. Last year, I discovered Telltale on YouTube, who is a former cult member as an ex-Jehovah's Witness. He consistently discusses what makes a group a cult, and his channel introduced me to the work of psychologist and cult expert Stephen Hassan, among other scholarly work on cult psychology. As I've explained on my channel before, Hassan developed a tool, the Byte Model, to describe and list cult manipulation tactics and help identify cults in the real world. Young Living fits the bite model to a frightening degree. It spreads false information, exploits people financially, fosters hyper-loyal, self-sacrificial followings, etc. Previously on my channel, I've gone through every manipulation tactic on the bite model and discussed how multi-level marketing companies utilize most of them. Here, though, I thought it'd be great to have Telltale himself discuss a few of Young Living's most heavily used tactics which cement its cult classification. So, I talked about Young Living on my own channel a while back, and at the end, my conclusion was that I hadn't yet been convinced of its status as a cult. Since GM was heavily involved in this, we've talked about it and I've picked out a few key points that Young Living meets on the bite model. A few damning marks. So let's take a look at a few. We'll start with some markers from behavior control. Financial exploitation. I feel comfortable saying that this is one of the biggest issues you find with the group. You find people commonly blowing through their entire life savings in no time to reach higher and higher goals, buying products that don't benefit them in any way. Next thing they know, they're stuck with a bunch of useless junk that they believe has almost supernatural abilities to cure diseases. Steven Hassan actually updated the bite model fairly recently. He added a few new markers. Here's one he added that they definitely meet. Major time spent with group indoctrination and rituals and or self-indoctrination, including through the internet. Now this one could apply to a lot of different types of ideologies. People can be indoctrinated in lots of different ideologies through the internet. But the key here is which other markers it meets in addition to this one. I would say this could apply to, say for example, Flat Earth. That doesn't mean that Flat Earthers are cult members necessarily. I have my own thoughts on that, which I won't get into here, but when you add this marker to the other markers Young Living meets, I feel like it's just another nail in the coffin. Like I said, they meet a lot of different markers here. It isn't just two or three from each category, but I want to point out the most glaringly obvious, the ones that make them a cult. Let's take a look at information control. Sometimes propaganda can make or break a cult. Look at some of their really beautiful, eye-catching propaganda. This is what it's all about. 
Spend lots of money on propaganda and you'll draw lots of eyes. Another marker they hit under information control is compartmentalizing information into insider versus outsider doctrines. They demonize anybody who disagrees with them. They don't want essential oils being sold on the market because it's cutting into their bottom line. This is a good way to create an extremist. Start small and malign something that's widely distrusted and then give a pseudoscientific explanation for why you were right to distrust that thing. They stabbed an antibiotic pen into her muscle several times and she was on two different types of medications. Give them another option. Our product. They're building a trust relationship. They're feeding off of this person's fears and beliefs. Don't trust chemotherapy. It's dangerous. Don't you see that people get sicker when they go through chemotherapy? They might even get a sham doctor on screen to act like an underdog saying, big science pushed me out because I threatened to expose them. Guy might not even be a doctor, might just be wearing a lab coat. People are ready to buy this stuff, and thanks to human psychology, it's a lot easier to sell than you'd think. Then they go through a quote-unquote scientific explanation for why chemo is bad for you, and they put their lavender oil up on display, or tea tree oil, or whatever other thing they're peddling. The person being indoctrinated already has that trust relationship after being told that chemo is bad for you. Now they're presented with an alternative. Finally, let me address one more point from the bite model, under emotion control. They make the person feel like the problems are their own fault, never the leader's or the group's fault. And often the people who don't succeed will blame the company and accuse it of being a scam. That's especially true of Young Living because you're selling a fake product. People are inevitably going to have a hard time selling this stuff. In an effort to sell others on essential oils and essential oils products, they have to perpetuate the propaganda themselves. The victim becomes the victimizer. They bought into these grandiose claims, and now they're spreading them as though they're fact. They're giving them to friends and family, people who trust them. And when it doesn't work, it's programmed into them to blame themselves for the failures. Never the leader. We have a solid product here. We have something that cures almost any disease. We just have to get it out to people. If you can't manage to spread something that cures almost everything, then it's your fault, not the leaders. So my final determination after talking with somebody who is closely associated with the group, after reviewing their extreme nature and context, and after looking at the new, updated bite model, I'm gonna have to call it. It's a cult. Thanks for having me on. Glad to be here. Now I need to talk you into coming on my channel. Thanks, Telltale. So, for good reason, I'm now incredibly distant from Young Living, and I plan to keep it that way. Upon realizing that it's a cult, I was relieved that I got away before it was too late for me, but I also became incredibly worried about everyone I know who's still in it. I don't know if they'll ever get out, even if it seriously hurts them. But if speaking out like I do prevents even one person from joining the cult I almost joined, it'll be worth it. Thanks for watching. I've been Drew of Genetically Modified Skeptic. If you're not subscribed to Telltale already, fix that right now, especially if you like learning about cults. It's one of my favorite channels, he's definitely one of my favorite people, and it's more than worth your sub. As always, go ahead and subscribe to me, check out my Patreon, follow me on Twitter and Facebook at GM Skeptic, join my Discord, and until next time, stay skeptical.